Hi, I'm Josh Bomar and welcome to Bomar Bow Hunting. I am so excited to share with you the story of wires, the biggest buck I have ever seen. This buck has so much character. He's got three drop tines, he's super wide, and man, oh man, that frame. I knew after the first picture I got of that deer, he was gonna score over 200 inches. Immediately, I pulled out the satellite maps, studying, planning, trying to figure out where this giant's home range is. All right. Well, after studying the maps, I have a really, really good idea where I think Wires is living. So uh, we're gonna go try to get some permission right now. Now, what I have on my side is the fact that he is my neighbor. So I'm really hoping that this will be good for us because I gotta get permission. I, I don't think I'm gonna be able to kill him on my place. The property's just too small. Well, we're showing up at my neighbor's and uh, we're just gonna keep our fingers crossed. He owns the big chunk of woods where I think Wires is living. Um, he's got 25 acres over here, and uh, this is going to be pretty cool. I think I, I have a chance. <laughs> Looks like he's home. Wish me luck, guys. That was uh, his wife, and he seems to be down at the shop, so hopefully uh, this goes well. So. Well, I gotta know, but that wasn't the worst part. The worst part is, uh, Don is a big hunter, and a good one at that. He uh, he also knows about wires. He calls it he calls it freak nasty. God, he's got him on camera too. But what's kind of interesting about this whole situation? He's he's never got a daylight picture of him, just like me. So I, I don't know, I may, maybe this deer's not living over here. I mean, he's got the woods, he's got everything. I figured that this, that that buck would be living here and, and I don't think he is. We're gonna keep going guys. We're just gonna keep getting after it and, uh, and try to find a place where this buck's coming. Cause I mean, he's been showing up, you know, based on what the camera showed for quite a bit but always at night, always in the middle of the night. And so I don't, he's obviously not living anywhere nearby. So we're gonna go over here and hope that we find him over here. <clears throat> that was, uh, a very, very nice no, because he hunts himself. Oh my God. I don't even know how this deer could even be alive still, truthfully, with this many people hunting. I mean, he's completely surrounded by hunters. Yeah, he hunts himself, and I don't think he knows about that deer. He's a really nice guy, nice family, but there's uh, getting less and less hopeful here. My heart sank. As if hunting a giant old buck wasn't hard enough, now I'm competing against a bunch of other hunters all going after the same buck. Well guys, it's October 5th and I could not be more excited to be sitting in the tree right now. We are hunting a deer that I was hunting last year named Wires, except this year he has blown up to over two 
hundred inches. I mean, he is a monster. You know, last year he was four years old and I did try to get him truthfully, but I'm glad I didn't because this buck is a giant. And uh, he came in at one o'clock last night, but um, it's, I mean, it's not anywhere near daylight. However, I'm feeling pretty optimistic with the moon being as well as it is. And the DeerCast app said it's supposed to be great tonight. So let's hope. Well, guys, it's October 18th and I'm hunting a deer. We call wires and I cannot tell you how excited I am to be sitting in the blind on a deer that can go over 200 inches. And I just hope I get one opportunity at this big giant. So let's hope it comes together for me. It's not broken daylight yet, but I hope I'm sitting here when he does. Wish me luck. Every day he shows up, I'm just so grateful that someone else hasn't killed him yet. Literally every single one of my neighbors hunts. So who knows who's going to get lucky. But it is pouring down rain right now. And it's supposed to rain for the next three days. I'm hoping that keeps everyone else out of the woods. Then maybe I'm the only one left. So I'm hoping he'll come in in the rain. I don't know. Well, I've seen a doe. But other than that, I haven't seen a whole lot of movement. So it did come in within bow range, which is good. So getting back to that last golden hour, the rain even picked up. It's raining harder than ever. Let's hope he shows. Well, it's October 28th, and I am still after wires right now. Last night was going to be the night. Uh, he just didn't come in until about an hour after dark. But he did come in, which is good. I cannot afford to take a day off. Not with wires running around trying to find a doe. All I can do is just keep hunting and hope and pray that it'll come together for me. Well, this was obviously a hard deer to pass up, but like Grandpa always said, you can't kill a great buck if you always kill the good bucks. So it was gonna be wires or nothing. He started showing up less and less and eventually not at all. And after two weeks of not a single trail cam photo, I was convinced that someone had killed him. So I called all the local butcher shops and all the local tax service, trying to find out if anyone heard about a 200 inch deer that had dropped hinds being killed in the area, but nobody heard anything. I had little hope left. After 16 days and no sight of him, I thought for sure he was gone. But then one night, my cell cam goes off and I couldn't believe it. Wires has showed back up. We just had one problem. Gun season was right around the corner. And with everybody that knows about this buck, he has little chance of making it through. So if I was gonna kill him, I was gonna have to do it quick. I knew during gun season, there was gonna be a lot of people in the woods probably pushing this big giant around if he doesn't get killed. So my strategy during gun season was I was not gonna be in the woods at all. I wasn't gonna check cameras. I wasn't gonna do anything because if he did get pushed through my property, I wanted him to feel as safe as possible, which means no scent and no sign of humans. Well, as season progresses, you guys are gonna start wearing more and more layers like I do. And a lot of people don't actually practice in what they're hunting. They wait till a good day to go out and practice and they're not wearing the same clothes as say a big cold front like this moves in. Um, so I personally think a great piece of advice is to practice in the gear that you're gonna hunt in, no matter what time of year that is, early season or late season. So it's obviously late season. You're also gonna be wearing gloves this time of year. And uh, I'm gonna show you guys some long range practicing. We are 80 yards right now. And I don't plan on shooting a deer at 80 yards, but shooting and being proficient at 80 makes those 70, 60, 50, and 40 yard shots like a breeze. So 
Let's let her rip. Second day of gun season, my cell cam went off and I couldn't believe it. Wires showed up in daylight on our property. Well, it's snowing like crazy, so I rushed home and I needed to check where they crossed the road because there's only one spot they do that and I wanted to check for fresh tracks. And as luck would have it, there were no fresh tracks, which only meant one thing. He still bedded down on our place. Well, I have multiple stands and blinds set up on my property, and I really wanted to get in closer to where I thought he was going to be coming in, but I knew with him bedded and with the snow on the ground, he would see my access. So I had to pick a blind that was 60 plus yards away from where I thought he would come through. And unfortunately, that's not ideal with a bow, but I didn't have a choice. I was watching this young buck all afternoon. He was being the biggest bully. Chasing all the other deer off, he wouldn't let anybody near him. And this continued to happen all the way up to about 15 minutes before legal shooting light. And that's when his whole demeanor changed. He turned and faced the woods. He puffed up, put his ears back, and he was staring into the woods. It felt like forever. And then all of a sudden, those ears came forward, he deflated, and he walked off. I knew right then and there something big was coming, something really big. Oh gosh, guys, that just shot wires. Yes, oh, I gotta get this, get stabilized there. I got it. 
got him right at last light. He came in. I can't believe it. Yes. Oh, oh gosh. I'm hunting with a bow during gun season. almost a 70 yard shot on a world class deer with a boat. I mean, that's a chip shot with a gun. This deer's too important to me. I'm too special to shoot him with anything other than, than a bow. This is a new Hoyt RX-3. <sighs> this bow is bad to the bone. Gotta go. I gotta go tell Sarah. Yeah, we gave him over an hour. So, I'm really nervous about the shot, guys, but I'm like, 90% sure I saw him go down. So we're gonna go find some blood right out of the way, or right away because it's snowing right now. I don't want it to cover his tracks. This deer is a world-class buck. By far my biggest buck I've ever seen, let alone shot. And I uh, just pray for me guys that we find him because we're about to go look. What is it? Oh, oh my god, he's oh. oh my god. I got wires. Come on this side. Oh, we got him. Oh gosh, guys. I don't even know what to say. This deer is so special for so many reasons. I can't believe I'm sitting behind him right now. This deer is just an absolute giant. I mean, he's got points everywhere. <sighs> it's the first deer I've ever harvested on our own property, my wife and I's property. I mean, my first landowner buck and this deer's giant. I don't know what he'll score. He's just got drop times everywhere. It's just so many points. <sighs> we hunted this deer so hard. I mean, we, he didn't show up until mid mid-October and he was hitting some scrapes we had and he just didn't break daylight much and uh, finally you know he uh, started getting more and more consistent right there at the rut and when I was hunting in one spot he'd show up at the other and we just couldn't catch a break and I ended up going to Kansas and my wife started hunting the buck and same thing happened to her she'd sit at one spot he'd, he'd show up at the other and we just could not catch a break and then he disappeared for two weeks, and I thought for sure that he got shot. I mean, no nighttime pictures, nothing for two weeks. And uh, and then out of nowhere, he just showed back up, and it was a miracle. I couldn't believe it. He didn't break off any tines. And after the rut last year, we had this buck, and and I was feeding him all year, even after season, just to keep him healthy, because he made it. And I never thought in a million years he'd pack over 50 some inches of antler in a year. But I mean, this is just unbelievable. 
Now I had to make the farthest shot I've ever made on a whitetail, which is, which is with this deer right here. And I shot him at 67 yards at right at last light. I didn't hit him where I wanted to, but he died within 35 seconds, to 45 seconds tops. I thought I watched him tip over and I wasn't sure. But sure enough, I did. This deer, he broke daylight this morning. And uh, he broke daylight this morning and uh, I, just, I just prayed to God that he bedded close by. And we only own five acres here, so it's not a huge huge section of land to hunt obviously but it was enough <sighs> thank you babe so much Sarah's put up a lot with the stress that this deer has caused I'm just so grateful right now to be sitting behind this buck I had honestly lost hope god Wow. Call your friends. I gotta call. I gotta call everybody. Hello. Mark. Yes. Yeah. <sighs> Dude. Come on, Josh. Dude. Did you kill him? Hang on a sec. Check your Did phone. You <laughs> Check. <laughs> Check your phone. Oh, you son of a gun. Check it. You son of a gun. <laughs> <laughs> we, I did it, man. Dude, that is amazing. Can you believe it? No, I can't believe it. I can't either, dude. Oh, son of a gun. What a freaking relief. Oh, you know the headache that this deer's caused me. We, I got it done, man. Dude, that is so awesome. it, it's, he didn't break a single tine off, not even a scratch. Oh, <sighs> that is <amazing>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just, I had to call you, dude. I had to let you know. Dude. <laughs> that is so spectacular. Congratulations. I am in route. I'll be there as quickly as I can. Awesome, Mark. I'll see you. All right, dude. Bye. I'll see you. Guys, this buck was hunted by a lot of people. I actually tried literally leasing every single piece of property in this entire area and they're all leased, all hunters, completely surrounded. 100, literally 368 degrees, 360 degrees, there's hunters on every single corner. And there's a lot of people trying to kill this buck, including my neighbor, God bless him. But. I just, I can't believe it, that we got him on our property, five acres, it's all we own right here, but it was enough. I just, I can't believe my hands are on him, babe. <laughs> oh my gosh. Thank you so much for your support and if you want to join the bow hunting family hit that subscribe button and make sure to turn on notifications to be one of the first to see our new videos posted if you're new to our channel check out our other videos we have over 70 bow hunts that i think you'll enjoy and if you'd like to keep up with us daily make sure you go over to instagram and give us a follow there where we post every single day and it's always outdoor related